Hello, I'm Arnold Lowry. In landscape painting, it's so important to get the shapes right, not only in the sunlit areas, but in the shadow areas as well. In this picture of sand dunes and, and sea, I've ensured that the, the shape of the uh, sand dunes is not a predictable shape, otherwise we'd end up uh, with, with an Egyptian pyramid, which would be extremely boring. So let's get on with the painting and uh, we'll put some water and some paint on, on the sky area. I want the sky area to be nice and soft, so therefore I'm making sure it's all wet to start with. And the colour I'm going to be using is Thalo Blue. But Thalo Blue is a very intense colour. So I'm adding a little bit of Cadmium Scarlet with it to grey it off slightly. And here we go. Get it down as fast as you possibly can. So many people, they paint an area 12 times before they believe it's covered. And then they end up with a, a total lack of luminosity. Right now, we'll get some kitchen roll and we will now dab out the, the clouds. Remember, you have to have some a bit of paint on that sky, otherwise the, the clouds won't, won't stand out. And keep turning your, your paper around so that the, you're not dabbing dirty paper back in. And again, the cloud shapes don't want to end up like five cotton wool balls hanging on strings. They want to be interesting shapes. Right, we'll let the sky dry now and then we'll get on with the sea, okay? I'm going to paint the sea now. And it's important to have the horizon as a straight line. So many seascapes are spoilt because this isn't done. So... In order to achieve this, I'm going to use some masking tape. I'm going to put the masking tape over the sky. So I'm pushing the bottom edge of it onto the paper. And now I'm going to mix the same mixture as I did in the, in the sky. And... Uh, except it'll be stronger. And once I've got that, I can then peel off my tape. And I've got that lovely straight edge. The next job now is to achieve the waves and I hold the brush flat and work the edge and then it'll, it, it'll allow me to have a nice rough edge on the top of the waves. Put some sunlight on those waves. Now we can start to fill in a bit in between. 
I'm just leaving a couple of uh, gaps in the paint to indicate white horses out on the sea. The next job now is to put some, some sand colour in now. I'm going to clean my palettes. I'm going to use a little bit of gamboge, but not a lot. Even that's too much. And as I come forward, just uh, add a little bit of burnt sienna into the mix. And this gives a, a bit of aerial perspective, which brings the sand, which is uh, closer to you, uh, gives more dimension into the, into the sand. I'm painting these sand dunes as though there's no shadow anywhere at the moment because the shadows are going to be laid on afterwards. And we'll mix a little bit of phthalo blue with that. Let's put a little bit of wet sand, because sand is a little darker when it gets wet. 